Hello everybody, this is Dr. Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue thinking about earth materials. So this is going to correspond to section 4.5 of your textbook. Now, as we've discussed in previous minerals, one of the key diagnostic features that a geologist can use to identify a mineral is cleavage. So the question then becomes is, well, you know, what is cleavage? Why does cleavage exist? Well, to define it once again, cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to break along parallel planes. So all that means is, is your crystal naturally has planes of weakness along which it will preferentially split, and those planes of weakness run parallel to each other. So the question is, is well, right, where are these planes of weakness coming from? And it's all down to the way the atoms are arranged in the crystal lattice. So you can see here we have a diagram of a crystal lattice and it consists of three different elements, the blue, the brown and the grey. Now you'll notice that the blue and, uh, blue and brown atoms here are linked together by bonds and these bonds are quite short. Typically, the shorter the bonds, the stronger the bonds. Uh, so that means these sheets of blue and brown atoms here are probably going to be quite robust. So it's going to be quite difficult to break those bonds so your mineral isn't going to naturally split along those bonds. Now in between these sheets of blue and brown atoms we have these grey atoms and these are helping to bridge the gap between these sheets. Now the thing you'll notice in this case is that the bond length here is quite long. Typically, the longer the bond, the weaker the bond will be. The bond, bond weakness or strength will also change depending on what type of bond you have, but we're not going to get into that. So in this instance, we're focusing purely on the bond length. And you'll notice that in this case, we have a much longer bond. It's therefore going to be naturally weaker. And so when our mineral begins to break, well, where is it going to break? It's going to preferentially break along the weakest point. And the weakest point in this instance will be these grey atoms which are holding these sheets together. And so when our mineral breaks, it's going to preferentially break along this plane of weakness. Now, the reason that the cleavage uh, planes run parallel to each other is because crystals, by their very nature, must have an organized internal structure, which means the same weakness is going to appear again and again and again. And so the, the cleavage planes will always be running parallel to each other because the same weakness is just being repeated in the crystal structure. Now, as we've already gone and discussed, when a mineral breaks along cleavage, it will often leave a pretty smooth surface behind as part of that process. And the process of actually breaking a mineral in two is referred to as cleaving the mineral. And so what we've seen here is we can see this particular crystal, this is a mineral called biotite, has been cleaved to give us multiple sheets. So we've preferentially split the mineral along its plane of weakness, the cleavage plane, and the result has been the formation of several individual sheets. So the next question is, is okay, well, cleavage occurs when I have a crystal structure where there is a preferential weakness. There's a, a weak point in the crystal lattice along which the crystal will fail. What happens though if I have a situation where all the bonds are the same strength? Well, in this case, you can see we have a crystal lattice and it consists of these green atoms and these yellow atoms. And you can see bond length is consistent between them all. And this means in theory, your crystal could fail on one of three planes. It could fail essentially on this plane, this plane, or that plane. The problem is, is because there's no preferential plane of weakness, well, your mineral could in theory fail along any of those planes. There's no reason for it to you know, preferentially fail in one orientation over the other. So when we have minerals that have bonds which are uniformly the same strength, well, it will not have cleavage because cleavage requires that consistent weakness at, the, uh, at the, uh, the level of the crystal lattice. When you don't have these weaknesses, well, when the mineral, when the mineral breaks, it will simply fracture. 
then when a mineral fractures, it will give you a highly irregular surface, like this piece of quartz here. You can see the surface is very, very uneven, and that is because quartz doesn't have a cleavage. So when it breaks, it doesn't have a preferential plane along which it fails. It just breaks, you know, in any orientation it wants, giving you this rough, jagged surface. Compare that once again to the biotite crystal here, which you can see has a nice smooth surface there, and that's because it's split along one of these planes of weakness, the cleavage plane. So if there is a weakness, the mineral will cleave, and if there isn't a weakness, the mineral will simply fracture. Now, as we've discussed, the number of cleavage planes is variable depending on your mineral. So some minerals will have one cleavage plane, some will have two, three, four, five, six, or in some rare circumstances, even higher, but that's very, very rare. Typically, six is about as high as you can possibly go. So what do these different types of cleavage tell us? Okay, so here's our first type of cleavage, and the cleavage plane is being marked out by this gray square here. So you can see here's our mineral, and you can see it has this stacked appearance, almost like pages in a book. And you can see here are our cleavage planes, and you can see they're going all the way through the mineral. So we can see them on one side and we can see them on another side. Now, because the cleavage plane is a result of a uh, repeating weakness in the crystal lattice, we can see that the cleavage planes are all running parallel to each other. Now, we can see in this case that we only really have one cleavage plane and it's marked out by this gray square. And so when we break our mineral, it's going to preferentially fail along one of these planes. So this mineral is defined as having one dominant direction of cleavage, and this is given a specific name which is referred to as basal cleavage. So basal cleavage simply means a mineral that has one cleavage. So what happens if our mineral has two cleavages? So here we go, we can see in this case, here's our mineral and it has two cleavages. Now the first question is, is how do we know it has two cleavages? Well, if we just ignore the purple and, and yellow planes for just a second and just look at the crystal itself, what can we see? Well, we can see that this side of the crystal is very, very smooth. A smooth edge to the crystal would possibly suggest that we are looking at a cleavage plane, because remember, cleavage planes tend to produce relatively smooth surfaces. If we look at the top of our crystal, we can see the same thing. We have a relatively smooth surface. So this would suggest that there is a cleavage plane running parallel to the top of our crystal, which is going to be the yellow plane. And there is a cleavage plane which is running parallel to the edge of our crystal here, which is going to be the purple plane. So we have two cleavages in this situation. Now, if we look at the end of the crystal, on the other hand, we can see the end of the crystal is highly irregular. So that means it's fractured. And this tells us there is no cleavage plane cutting across the end of our crystal here. So we only have two cleavage planes. So once we've identified the number, we then need to think, right, what angle are these cleavage planes intersecting each other at? And we can see in this case, the angle that they're intersecting each other at is 90 degrees. So one cleavage plane is 90 degrees to the other. So this situation where we have two cleavage planes which are perpendicular to each other, so they meet at 90 degrees, that's referred to as a prismatic cleavage. So if we define a mineral as having a prismatic cleavage, that means it has two cleavage planes, and those cleavage planes intersect at right angles to each other. Now, what happens if we have a situation where we have a mineral that has two cleavage planes, but those cleavage planes do not intersect at 90 degrees. So let's look at our crystal here. Straight away we can begin to pick out that we have two cleavage planes. Number one, we can see we have this flat surface here. We can see it repeated here, 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 and here. Once again, a flat surface is suggesting to us that we have a cleavage plane, a plane of weakness along which the mineral will preferentially split. And so that's going to be represented by this kind of uh, brownish colored plane here. We also have a smooth surface here, 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 here. And this is going to be our second cleavage plane, which is marked out by the purple sheet. Now you will notice in this case, the two cleavage planes are not intersecting at 90 degrees. Now you're thinking to yourself, right, how can we be sure there's not a third cleavage plane? Well, look at the front of the crystal here. Once again, you can see we have a highly irregular surface. And so this is indicating to us we do not have a cleavage plane there. 
So in this instance, we have two cleavages which are non-perpendicular to each other. So they're not intersecting each other at 90 degrees. In this case, they're intersecting each other at 120 degrees, which is that angle from here to here, and, and, and 60 degrees, which is this angle from here to here. So this type of cleavage is referred to as a non-prismatic cleavage. That means we have two cleavage planes, but they do not intersect at 90 degrees. So what happens if we have three cleavage planes? Well, here we go. We have a mineral that is giving, well, it's quite obviously got a very cubic shape to it, hasn't it? And we can see our cleavage planes quite easily because once again, we're going to look for those smooth surfaces. So we can see we have the smooth surface on the top here, which is consistent with this yellow plane. We have the smooth surface on this side, which is consistent with the blue plane. And we have the smooth surface on this side, which is consistent with the purple plane. And so we can see that we have three planes of weakness along which our mineral is preferentially splitting to produce this cubic shape. So obviously in this instance, we have three cleavages and we can see that these cleavages are intersecting each other at 90 degrees. So they're at right angles to each other. And that's what's helping to produce this cubic shape. So when we have three cleavages, which are perpendicular to each other, so they all meet at 90 degrees, and that will often produce this box shape, which we can see here, that's referred to as a cubic cleavage. So as a geologist, if you say cubic cleavage, I instantly know, right, he's talking, he or she is talking about a mineral that has three cleavages and they're all intersecting at 90 degrees. Now, what happens though, if the cleavage planes are not intersecting at 90 degrees. So here's another crystal. And once again, we can see we have three smooth faces. So we have the top here, which once you can see is smooth, which suggests a cleavage plane, which is marked out as the yellow plane. You can see we have another cleavage plane marked at the end here, which is also smooth, which that's marked out by the purple cleavage plane. And then finally, we have another cleavage plane, which is marked out by the smooth surface here, here, and here. That's going to be this blue colored cleavage plane. So once again, we have three cleavage planes, but in this instance, they are not perpendicular to each other. They're meeting at angles to each other. So what's the term we're going to use to describe that? Well, in the case of three cleavage planes, which are non-perpendicular to each other, it produces a type of cleavage which we refer to as a rhombohedral cleavage. And so once again, as a geologist, if you tell me that, right, this mineral has a rhombohedral, rhombohedral cleavage, then I know I'm looking at a mineral that should have three cleavage planes, but they will not be intersecting at 90 degrees. Okay, I know that was a lot of information to throw at you, but this is the kind of thing that a geologist will look for. So when we see a crystal of a mineral, one of the things which we'll be keeping an eye out for is we'll be looking for these smooth surfaces on the crystal, because the presence of these smooth surfaces is often a very good indicator that there is a cleavage plane present. Where we have minerals that do not have smooth surfaces, like this end of this crystal here, well, that's telling us, right, there's no cleavage plane there. And so a geologist will look for these indicators and from them we will try and gauge how many cleavages there are and at what angle they intersect. And from there we can work out hopefully what mineral we're viewing. All right. Thank you for watching everybody and have a good day.